and what we're talking about this morning affects how we scatter. It's who we are. It's what we do as a gathered and scattered people of God. And so the scripture for this morning, if you have your Bibles, comes from the New Testament, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9. We're reading verses 6 through 12, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 12. This is written by the Apostle Paul to the church at Corinth. Again, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm starting with verse 6. Paul wrote, remember this, Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, You will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanksgiving to God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we do recognize your presence here in this place, and we are grateful for your nearness. We're grateful for your word, and we're grateful for this gathering, this feasting for the scattering. So in the time that we have remaining, would you move on your church Move us to respond that we might join you in what you are doing in this world and in this city we love so much. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Pray those words with me. Come Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning, again, we are starting a new series. It's campus-wide. It's titled, I Like Giving. It's inspired by a book by the same name written by Brad Forsma. And so this morning is the first of three Sundays where we are focusing on stewardship, and it'll culminate on that third Sunday with pledge cards and making our commitments to the greater body. And very practically speaking, those pledge cards, that's a way of us communicating what we will each individually say we will do and give for the next year, 2023, and that's how we build our budget predicated based on what we say we will do. And so let me say from the beginning, we are a part of something bigger than ourselves. And that's why we give so that it adds to the greater good. And if I get hit by a bus, the ministry of Marvin will go on because of that greater good, the collective and pooled resources that we are contributing in, in uh, Jesus' name. And this This is wired, hardwired into our DNA as a people of God. He has hardwired generosity and giving into the fiber of our very being, and we're going to unpack that this morning as we dig deeper into that scripture from 2 Corinthians chapter 9. First, let me tell you about Tracy, who was a single mom to a three-year-old daughter. She was also eight months pregnant. She went to nursing school at night. She lived off of food stamps and welfare, and she was so content with her context, her circumstance, all that she had. She gave glory to God. And on one particular Thanksgiving, while families and people near and far are preparing turkeys and making the dressing, Tracy looked into her pantry at the few canned goods that lined those shelves, and she heard a knock on the door. And she went to open the door, and she was surprised that there was a delivery by, from an anonymous donor who'd gifted her a Thanksgiving 
feast. And she was overwhelmed with joy, and she called her parents, was this you? No. Called her friends, was this you? No. And she didn't know who was responsible for providing such a feast, and she had tears of joy the rest of the day as she enjoyed turkey and dressing. Someone outside of her circle of influence noticed her situation and did something about it without drawing any attention to themselves. Well, years went by and Tracy finished that degree and she got a job at a hospital as a nurse and she moved out of that apartment. And over the course of time, one of her former neighbors, Margot, was admitted into Tracy's care. Margot had multiple sclerosis. She was nearing the end of her life. And just a few days before her death, laying there in her bed, her crooked finger waved Tracy closer where Margot whispered, Happy Thanksgiving. And Tracy realized it was Margot who'd provided for her. Margot, who had MS, provided for Tracy. She was, Margot was, the unassuming agent of generosity in Tracy's life without anyone asking her to be, without expecting anything in return. Margot just did because that's what we do. That's who we are. Point forward, Tracy purposed to be and do generous things for other people as well. And the moment she got off of welfare, she provided a huge gift basket for the next person in line as a means of blessing to that person. And she has fostered children all the way to and through adopting them as her very own. She's volunteered at the Humane Society and she leaves gift cards for colleagues and coworkers hidden around their workspace so that they might stumble upon them and be blessed unknowingly in Jesus' name. There is something incredible about giving. And the beauty of it all is that giving is God's idea in the first place. We give because God gave first. We give because we are created in God's image to reflect God's glory and God's goodness as we live in this world, connected to God with his life flowing in us and through us. We see and hear things differently and we respond as God prompts us to. And that type of living, that type of response is what it means to be generous. Generosity is a profoundly life-giving and satisfying way to live. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Jesus himself said those words. That way of living, generosity, the generous way of life, is the only way of living. And it happens as we stay connected to God. And in so living, we reflect God. Way back in the beginning of it all, God created the heavens and the earth, created the sky and the water, and he formed and fashioned mountains and hills. He created the sun and moon to govern both day and night, and he peppered the sky with stars. And if that weren't enough, he created things that grow, plants and flowers, fruits and vegetables. God created animals of every kind to roam this earth, to fill the seas, to fly in the air. And if that weren't enough, God created humanity. You and me, the crowning climax of all of God's creation. At the end of each day of creation, God looked at it and said, behold, it's good. But at the end of that sixth day, when he created humanity, he looked and he said, that is very good. Because he'd created us in his image with a capacity for reason and relationship to steward over all things, to participate in creatively creating things. And in so doing all of those things, we reflect who God is. Co-creators with him, participants in bringing life into this world, whether physical or spiritual, even artistic. That's the first point. God created us to reflect him. Why'd he do it? Because God is, in God's very nature, love. God's glorious self-giving is the overflow of his self-sacrificial love, and God has the mind that the other person, you and me, all humanity, thrive in the fullness of life. And not only that, God created all things for you and me richly to enjoy, but more than 
experiencing these things is the utilization of those things for the betterment and enrichment of others. God is generous. And more than experiencing God's generosity, he has invited us to participate in it. God created because he is loving, he is generous. That's who we were created to be. Image bearers of God, co-creators with him, full of God's love, participants in his generosity. We were created to reflect God as icons in the land. But shortly after God created all things, after he looked at us and said, very good, sin entered in. Jen Wilkins said, we were chosen to reflect God in the garden, but chose to rival him instead. We've been rivals ever since, striving ever since. At the height of our striving, God came looking for us. In the beginning of it all, came looking for us in the Garden of Eden and clothed us in garments of animal skin. No doubt a precursor to the sacrificial system, the blood of bulls and goats. But at the height of that striving, God came looking for us in the person and work of Jesus, and he clothed us in his own righteousness. Ever since the beginning of time, God has been working to restore all things, you and me even, to our created and intended purpose, getting, giving out of the abundance of his self-sacrificial love, inviting us to join him as agents of generosity. Remember when Margot noticed Tracy and responded in an extravagant way, she was an agent of God's generosity. She reflected God. We were created to reflect God's self-giving and God's self-sacrificial love. And as such, second point, we were created to operate out of that fullness. We were created to live, move, and have our being out of abundance. What is fullness? Think about that river that is about to overflow its banks. It is full of fish. And every time you cast your line in the water. You pull out a fish because it is so full. There is an abundance of fish. This idea of abundance, of fullness, it doesn't mean that we have everything, but it does mean we have everything we need. It means we are content in any and every situation. A pantry peppered with canned goods, I'm so grateful. I'm not talking about a type of prosperity gospel. We're talking about the one true God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills, supplying all of our needs according to his riches and glory, or as verse eight says that we just read, so that we may always have enough of everything and that we may provide in abundance for every good work. Abundance means, despite your circumstance, there is the presence of God to trust in God's provision and participate in his creating. And out of that fullness, a deep satisfaction with and a stewardship of our things will have enough to provide in abundance for every good work. This is how we reflect God's generous heart, his extravagance, God who has saved us. He's gifted us with his own Holy Spirit, wired us all differently with our own unique talents and abilities, offers us the fruits of the Spirit, peace, love, joy, and all those things without limit. But just to be clear, the Apostle Paul in this passage is talking about our earthly and material possessions, financial means. All grace abounds in all things at all times that we may provide, that we might participate with God in, that we might be a part of every good work. It is God who will multiply our resources and increase our harvest of righteousness. God will enrich us for great generosity. All grace abounds in all things, at all times. You and I, we will abound for all good works. 
We were created to operate out of fullness, which means trust, creativity, participation with God. It means stewardship. Third point, we were also created to be generous, which is the fruit of lips that give God thanks. Being generous is giving more than is expected, whether fiscally or physically, to the betterment of those around you. When Brad Forsma, author of this book, I Like Giving, when he himself learned of a Sudanese family who'd had their bicycle stolen, he and his family had a change of heart with respect to their plans for that day. They were going to a nearby water park. Instead, they decided to participate with the solution and provide bikes for this family in the context of community. And this Sudanese family was overjoyed Upon receiving those gifts of new bikes, the husband of that family said, I like bike. I like bike. And that has become the moniker for a movement. Every time Brad shares this story as a reflection of God's generosity, he started to receive text messages from friends that said, I like Taco Bell, or I like warm winter coats. Brad said, I like became code for the fact that we'd just been able to make someone else's day. God provides us with every blessing so that we might always have enough and that we might abound as participants with God in the good work that he is doing in this world. Verse 11, you will be enriched in every way for great generosity God generously heaps on us out of his own generosity that we might be generous to, and that produces gratitude, which is life-giving for the community. Ingratitude sucks the life right out of community, and you know those people who spend so much time grumbling that they become a grumble, and that's contagious. How do we become or keep from becoming what we despise for the purpose of generosity. We recognize our blessings. We give thanks for the community that we are a part of, the food on our table, the people that we love, and the health that is ours. We also give thanks when things don't go our way, or for the one who's a jerk, for the mundane things that We'll never make the spotlight. We give thanks for Jesus. And here's the deal. In gratitude, gratitude, gratitude is the wellspring for generosity. When we are grateful rather than grumble, we become more generous, which begets gratitude and begets generosity. It's a vicious cycle both here and here. And it is essential that we reflect on how good God is to us, that we might be good, gracious, and generous to others because we were created to reflect God. We were created to operate out of fullness. We were created to be generous. And gratitude is the wellspring of generosity. So let me ask, is anybody here tired of just doing church, of dabbling in religion, of showing up and playing church like it's a checkbox religion, so tired and uninspiring. What if we immersed ourselves in the movement and ministry of God marked by graciousness, gratitude, and generosity, the generous giving of our lives? Participants with God and all he's doing, reflecting God for this world to see, for each other to experience. And in order to do that, in order to be that, let me challenge your mindset because we have a poverty mindset. There is this mindset of scarcity within us. I may give some, but I ain't given all because it might affect my standard of living. I pray that God moves not only on our standard of living, but on our standard of giving, transforming our hearts and our minds from scarcity to abundance, because he owns 
the cattle on a thousand hills. He will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And he is able to bless us abundantly so that in all things, at all times, in all ways, having all that we need, we will abound in every good work. Let's test God in this and see if he doesn't move here and move here. Now let me encourage you. When the Apostle Paul was talking about financial resources, maybe you don't have it. That's okay. Maybe you are perpetually on the receiving end. That's okay too, because you are a part of something bigger than yourself. We are the body of Christ, and your needs will be met. And when they are, give thanks. That is something we can do right here, right now. Give thanks for the air we breathe, the food that we eat, the place we put our head each and every day, the community that we're a part of, the country that we live in. Live lives of gratitude because that is the wellspring of generosity. And giving is not just something we do. It's who we are. So let me tell you about the most generous church in Tyler, Texas. Sitting in this room, gathering under this roof right here, right now. We gather and we scatter in Jesus' name. We scatter having feasted on the word, counting our blessings, walking away with those blessings in hand. And as we see human need, we respond and we maintain the dignity and the sacred worth of every human being. We do so out of deep love, sacrificial love, and very generous giving that God has lavished upon each and every one of us. Core people, may God move on us and move us from awareness to action. May we live our lives with great intentionality and may we reflect God, his lavish love, his extravagant generosity. As we do, I pray and believe that God will move on this city of Tyler. And he will do that because he's moving on his church and we get to be a part of it because that's who we are. So come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, Come, Holy Spirit, pray with me. Lord, we are so grateful for this movement that we are a part of. More than anything, I like Jesus. And I pray that that would be a wellspring of gratitude, that we beget generosity, that would launch and ignite a movement. Move on this church to the end that it blesses this city of Tyler. Come Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name, amen.